Hello and welcome to another edition of my Become Unstoppable series. Now, today I have um, something a little bit different for you. I do have a couple, a married couple on here that are going to share their story. But before I do that, I want to introduce myself. My name is Julie Fitzpatrick and I'm the founder of Millicide Therapy and Coaching. And my passion really is supporting you stressed out business owners and professionals who are feeling, you know, that the, the daily life is becoming difficult for you and maybe that's impacting your confidence. So what I do is help you tap into your subconscious mind, teach you tools and techniques on how that you can become calm and go from inner peace and clarity. So if you want to find out more, then please contact me and I'll be happy to have a conversation with you. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Trevor and Julia. Now, these are two lovely people who I've met in my business coaching program, and they are a couple that work together. So we're going to find out what happens when two people get together and work together in their business. So welcome to you both, Trevor and Julia. Yay! Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for joining me on my Become Unstoppable series. And I don't have couples on here very often, so it's going to be interesting to see how this works. And we're also going to get an insight into you two, right? See how you react together. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Psychology> experiment. <laughs> so first of all do you want to just introduce yourselves and let everybody know what it is you do yeah absolutely so as i say trevor and julia Eilert, our company is tj property mastery we started off um, having our own service accommodation properties through property training uh which are like holiday lets airbnb style uh, lettings and we've been doing that for over five years and through that experience and knowledge and everything else that we want to start sharing it back. So we've actually set up our own training company now to be able to help other people do exactly what we've done, whether it be a couple or whether on your own, just create that business and sort of getting out of that nine to five um, drag, if that's what people want to do or just create a side hustle. Nice. And I... We'll be interested to find out more about that in, in time. And we will talk about what you do a little bit later in, in this interview. But before we do anything else, I need to ask my question. And I don't mind who answers it, or you can both answer it, whatever you want to do. But I ask all my guests this question. What does being unstoppable mean to you? Yeah, um, I'll answer that one then, if that's okay. Um, so for me, it means not letting anybody get in their way. Um, working well under pressure is what we do, and don't let anybody tell us that we can't do something. Um, mm. um, and basically, I have a good example of that, if, if you want me to share that. Yeah, so, please. Okay, fine. Uh, so in uh, back in November 2019, we'd only had about four properties at that time. And there's a great saying by um, Richard Branson that says, say yes and figure it out later well we agreed a contract at the end of november for 40 people which actually ended up being 62 coming at the end of january uh, of the next year for six months they ended up staying for about eight months or so so we said yes in the old way and julia and i we proved it many a time we worked so well under pressure we work better under pressure when we've got something to really drive us so we needed to find extra properties um, we only had four we needed 15 as it turned out, we needed 17. But um, within 10 weeks, we got another 11 properties. By hook or by crook, we managed to beg, borrow, steal, uh, all various different strategies, another 11 properties, so we could fulfill that contract that we agreed to. So it was a great um, example of us saying, we can do this, let's just go and do it. And that's what I believe makes us unstoppable. Oh, I like that. So really, it's about when you're in a situation that you really need to pull out the stops, it's about digging deep and really, 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 really working together as a team as well, isn't it? And really digging deep. So how, I mean, how did you end up you doing this? Because how long have you been together? 25 years this year. I'm not going to say too long. <laughs> you get, so, yeah. get less for murder, Trevor, don't you? Yeah. Chris, <laughs> that's what you always say, isn't it? Um, so in that time then... Have you always worked together? 
in this business or did you do something else? Or? No, completely. we actually met at work. Uh, we were both single at the time, office romance. Uh, that was back in 1999. And uh, yeah, so we sort of then went off in different directions in workplaces. And uh, Trevor had the opportunity of setting up a pharmaceutical company as an MD um, he, back in 2004, I think you started, didn't you? Yes. Um, and he was fantastic. He had his staff and everything else. And the offices got relocated and it was close to home. And he asked me, he said, I'm really stuck. I haven't got a PA at the moment. Would you mind coming and helping me set up the offices, the office management just for a few weeks until, you know, I can get myself settled and get sorted. So I was like, yeah, I'll come and help you. No problem. You know, we'll, worked together before I'm sure that'll be fine well I ended up staying 10 years didn't I <laughs> no, it's, it's not a bad old boss then no, no. <laughs> I'm a great boss yeah absolutely <laughs> and again I suppose because he was the MD we had chairs in the company there was obviously a drive for us to do very well as well so it's not yeah. just sitting back and helping out on the sort of his right hand man coming up with ideas and driving the business in the way we wanted um but really sadly 2018 the pressure's just got too much for travel to say the least and um it was close to having a breakdown and it was just we need wow. to do something um yeah. it got quite bad um a lot of stress and everything wasn't there going on at work that behind our backs that we weren't really aware of at the time um that drove him to high blood pressure sleeping tablets and goodness knows what so it was yeah a big bang to us because obviously we'd worked together for such a long time and because we both decided well, i couldn't go back myself then after he'd gone we we're in the situation we had this beautiful five bedroom executive house and all our salaries had gone overnight um mm -hmm. so we had to find a replacement very quickly um, company cars went and all that sort of thing so this beautiful lifestyle that we had before we just went back to scratch really and started um, from day one. And uh, property had always been our passion and probably mine more than yours. And we had a couple of buy to let. So it was a little bit of income still, but not enough to sustain this house and mortgage and God knows what else. So we ended up renting that out and moving in with my mum into a one bedroom apartment, nice. <laughs> which is fun. That's where we want to be with that. for the marriage though, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. living with the mother-in-law yeah, yeah i think you got on back with her life yeah. actually <laughs> um so yeah it, it was a bit of a shock to the system um so it was just like we needed to go out and retrain ourselves really um uh, because obviously we wanted to make property work for us and we didn't know how um so we went out got educated went on lots of property training chasing the shiny penny obviously at one point you know i want to do this and then we go on another course like oh this sounds more interesting yeah, but, about that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, then, <laughs> but then once we realized and <clears throat> found the strategy of service accommodation we turned our two buy to lets from you know the normal ast to service accommodation and realized how much money we could make going from like 300 pound income to nearly three thousand um so it was just a no-brainer and it's sort of become our bread and butter hasn't mm. it now so yeah interesting i mean obviously i'm my ears prick up now when it talks about you know word stress and breakdown because obviously that's my field um did you ever have when you were going through that time when obviously the breakdown actually happened could you see it coming were you aware of what was going on for you back then yeah i think um, i knew there was stuff going on in the background and um you know considering i built the company up from just me to 31 employees and then to be sort of pushed to the sidelines um it, it's very stressful um very stressful and um it was leading to a lot of sleepless nights as julia said you know high blood pressure uh, which I have anyway, but this was obviously exacerbating it and making it worse. Yeah, but it was the sleepless nights that was the worst. Uh, I think I got to a stage where, you know, I can normally handle uh, three or four hours sleep a night for a, a short period of time, but continuously mm -hmm. for about two weeks. That's yeah, that was it. And yeah. like I, said, I, I basically <laughs> had a breakdown pretty much because of that. Well, not because of that, but as a result of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and this this is the thing, it all becomes a vicious cycle of events, doesn't it? Because if you're not sleeping, then your body's not healing. Yeah. And then your body gets sicker and sicker and sicker. 
and then that's when the spiral kind of happens and when you're not sleeping and I know this from personal experience too that obviously you wake up and you're exhausted mm. and then your mind's not in the right spot is it because you, you can't you have you haven't got clarity or focus because you're just exhausted right mm. and then you're running your business or running your life maybe making decisions that you shouldn't be or can't even make a decision because yeah. you're too too exhausted to even think about it mm. and, and you're not when, when we're in that kind of mode it becomes even more of a vicious cycle because then we're in that I'm I'm just too busy now I'm, I'm too busy being busy because it's all in the mess now and you're all hyper like this and that's when your thoughts start taking over then isn't it like oh my god mm. what's going to happen and then you start using your imagination and blowing everything out and then once you've done that <laughs> you're not eating properly because you haven't got time to think about you maybe you're not exercising maybe you're drinking too much or smoking or i don't know mm. drugs, whatever people do right yeah. and then it just becomes that that then more of a vicious cycle because you wake up even feeling even worse now yeah. because maybe you've got a hangover and you're not you, we are what we eat right so if we're not eating properly then it has that whole effect and then your body your body just starts to shut down yeah. And it just this this cycle. Yeah, the conversation yeah. we have at two, three o'clock in the morning, and trying to give them decaf tea just to calm them down, and like we've got to get back to sleep because we've got to see another day through and everything else. So it was yeah, it was really tough times mm. um, that we had to go through. But we saw the other side, and yeah. you know, it's made us probably stronger, um, not only as a couple but in business, um, because obviously before. We were working for someone else, making them rich. And um, so, why not just do it for ourselves and, you know, have the same, hopefully, results and a lot less stress? We have a lot of time off now. Um, you know, our work, you know, doing service accommodation is not a full time job. It's just a few hours a week, uh, 15 years of working with that same person. And at the end of it, what are we going to have? Probably not a lot. Trevor probably wouldn't have been here, to be honest. So, yeah, that 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 is. That, I mean, stress is one of the biggest killers, actually, yeah. and and that was one of the reasons why I kind of went down that route with my therapy and coaching business because I was well, you know, from business training, everything's all about niching, isn't it? Who's your niche? Who's your niche? Yeah. And when I started out, I went. My niche was women in the prime of their lives, and it was become unstoppable in the prime of your life. Was the whole thing, the unstoppable thing, started? because that was what, what I knew and that made sense to go with that. And many of my clients are women in the prime of their lives, but then I realised I had, a lot, I had men come in. And, but when I went, went through all my data, if you like, I noticed that without fail, every single client said, use the word stress at some point, mm -hmm. you know, and that normally went with anxiety and lack of confidence because they're all very much connected yeah. um and i thought well do you know what that's where i need to be and what i also if every single client without foul as well was that no one was really looking after themselves and by that i mean taking time out having that work-life balance doing the exercise eating well mm. and basically respecting themselves and you know managing their stress levels, knowing tools and techniques to do that. And that's what I decided to start bringing in. And I'm totally guilty of that myself. And one of my other business coaches, because I have many, when I was, you know, fighting myself with what my new niche was going to be, if you like, it was like, who were you three years ago? Well, three years ago, I was in the corporate world in a job that, wasn't really rocking my boat anymore didn't know at the time but I now know I was suffering from the perimenopause right so I didn't I couldn't even string a sentence together I mean not that great now but, <laughs> 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 but you know you blame it on the menopause it's fine um and then I got made redundant in the pandemic too so that's when I got the kick up the backside mm -hmm. to go and do something that I wanted to do but one of my the hardest things was learning how to connect to myself because i spent all of it in here yeah mm -hmm. you know and i don't know if this resonates with you guys that 
I think being the type of people we are as business owners now anyway, but also like you, you're very high up in your career as well, Trevor, in, your, in that corporate life, it's go, go, go all the time, isn't it? It's just yeah. non-stop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think you're right. I think, um, you know, you alluded to sort of uh, uh, mental stress, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I'm pretty old school. I've always been, you know, pick yourself up, dust yourself down and get on yeah. with it. Um, and although I've not actually ever had therapy as such, I had somebody to share my problems with, you know. So mm-hmm. being able to talk about them and having an understanding partner as Julia was uh, really, really helped. And, you know, mm-hmm. men typically, as you'll probably know because that's your business, Julie, but men typically bottle things up. I think they're getting better now. Uh, yeah. And I certainly have got better, but still it's very much, all, you know, bottle it up. I'm all right, deal with it. But I think when you've got somebody that can understand you personally as well, like Julia did with me, you know, mm. she was my therapist for want of a better word because mm. she was so supportive and so great. Mm. And as soon as she saw that things were getting on top of me, that's when she said, right, let's just get out. You know, rather yeah. than, oh, what can we do? We can't do this. Oh, well, yeah, I can't afford this. I don't, just, care. I don't care. You're yeah. more important. Let's mm. just get out. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah. For me, that's that's good. Therapy I needed. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and, I, and I think that is the problem a lot of the time, isn't it? When we're all... I was the same. Like I, I've, I've always been the main breadwinner. To actually cut my ties from the corporate world last year and be a hundred percent in my business was a huge decision. Yeah, it wasn't a difficult one in the sense that I couldn't wait to do it. But you know, the financial pressures is a stress in itself, isn't it? One of the biggest stresses is always about money. Yeah. And when you have been successful. You've, like you said, you had your executive house and your cars and, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But you kind of get to the point, don't you? And you're like, well, I don't, I when I set my business up, I had no intentions of earning, you know, 20 grand a year and making do because that's not what, that's not me. That's not what I'm about. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to build my business so that I can have financial abundance so that I can have that freedom, like you talk about. I want to get a camper van. I want to go traveling. You know, you want to do all this stuff, right? Because <laughs> the ultimate goal is retire and get on that camper van and just become a nomad, you know, live life how you want to on your own means. So, yeah, absolutely with you there. And I, and I think when you get, I don't know how old you two are, but when you get, to a certain point you, you you look at things differently don't you whereas when you're younger you're building that career you're building that future but I think when you get anything 40 50 60s it's kind of like no I'm it's, it's my time now and this is the other thing that I want to try and drum into my clients as well is we can all have it all right it's about knowing how to manage Knowing how the mind works is the biggest positive, yeah. right? And once we learn how to manage our self-talk, we can use our imagination in a positive way. Um, uncovering your limiting beliefs, which, because when I work with my clients, it's, it's going into the subconscious mind. And our body, we have to understand as well, is our subconscious mind. And it stores our feelings and our emotions. And, and that's why we get sick, because it's pain is you know sickness and pain are all energies and feelings and emotions that attract and they just manifest in different ways and that's when i went on my journey it was like oh my god i never knew any of this no and i and and, and you resonate with me Trevor, earlier when you said about just get on with it you know and all that kind of stuff and i was the same i can remember when i had my son my mate said to me something about um postnatal depression see brain fog um, <laughs> i just went to oh well, i haven't got time for that <laughs> <laughs> no, like, she always reminds me of that that's hilarious she said, oh, I've, got, I haven't got time for that. I haven't got time to get but like you though i've had my times i've had my i never went and got help at the time but because i didn't realize that's what it was and, and i think that's really important and if you were giving advice to other people about working in a stressful environment or your own business or whatever what tips would you give them to look out for to stop getting to the point stop them getting to the point that you got to um I, yeah yeah no go on you can if um, you want to no. but i think recognizing it is the biggest thing and not keep brushing mm-hmm. under the carpet 
And I think Trevor, bless him, you know, he tried to cover it up to start with and protect me um, because he could obviously see the lifestyle we were enjoying, beautiful holidays, traveling the world, albeit it was only a couple of weeks at a time because obviously you restricted the holiday amount. So, yeah, I think he was doing a lot of protecting and behind the scenes. And it wasn't until I started seeing a torch in the middle of the night at two o'clock in the morning, thinking, why is he on his phone? That's unusual for him. He's normally snoring his head off and keeping me away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's there then. At least you got some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, and then obviously I started then to worry, think, hang on, what's going on? And then I made him sort of talk. So I think it is be taking the ownership, but being mm -hmm. honest with yourself and yeah, don't cover things up because it can only get worse. And like you say, it's yeah. the worst the word for states into your body. And yeah, it yeah. just gets worse and worse when you go to that blow then. Um, I think the key, um, as Jim just said, is to talk to someone. Yeah. Whoever, whoever that someone is, just, just get it out of your system because, yeah. uh, you know, uh, an issue shared is a problem shared. Heart shared is a problem halved, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and it really does take that burden away from you. And you think it's not that bad after all, then it can be dealt with, you know. Yeah, so. yeah I mean, sometimes just talking about something can be really, really powerful. Um, but sometimes it can be enhanced, if you like, because of our, our past life, like our life, our timeline of life, right? Mm -hmm. So many of us have got limiting beliefs and issues if you like but that stem back to our childhood and once we can tap into that and release ourselves from those limiting beliefs or um <clears> that actually the feelings and emotions because they're trapped way back when you know like a good example might be if someone suffers from anxiety when they might go oh i'm having a panic attack oh my heart's pounding my stomach's turning and then they go, yeah, but it's really weird because I don't feel like I'm in that sort of situation. Your body is reacting, reacting to a stored memory. And that stored memory could go back to, say, when you were four years old and you created the belief that you weren't loved. So you might spend your whole life having terrible relationships because you, you don't feel lovable, right? And then when you're your subconscious and your body is sending out a vibration of I'm not good enough, I'm unlovable, then you're only going to attract people that are, are not going to be particularly nice to you because you're basically saying, look, I don't believe, I'm not worthy of having a, a good relationship, for example, because that's the message I'm putting out. So they're the sort of people I'm going to get. And that's why you see some people that maybe have continual rubbish relationships. Yeah. I mean, thankfully, I don't think that used to have childhood beliefs that you're unlovable right because um, you're together I, you know? <laughs> yeah, I think surprisingly yes, yeah. um i say surprisingly i'm actually predominantly a negative person and um i have a, I used to suffer really bad imposter syndrome I'm, I'm getting better i'm working on it and i'm uh, really certainly starting to make uh ways in that respect but um going back years and years my dad left when we were fairly young and mm. uh, left my mum to bring us up and he completely disowned us. And I think when I look back and reflect now, that did have an impact on me. That did That's affect good. me. Ooh. And even though I would never address it at the time, yes, of course, it made me feel, what did I do wrong? Why did he not want to know me? So there is that. Why did he love me? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And, and so, you know, um, there's that sort of thing that comes out even now, Absolutely. you know, and, and, does, and yeah. I still have to work on it to not let it affect me, but it's getting better. But these sort of things, as you would say, rightly so, tend to go back to your formative years in childhood. And I, I think that's one of the things, one of the reasons why I have those issues, for want of a better word. Yeah. Well, you need to come and work with me then, Trevor, because we can get them and get rid of them so you don't have to keep fighting it. And then this is the problem, right? People go, oh, I manage, manage my, my anxiety, but you don't need to manage it. That's the whole yeah. point. I have yeah. I am not knocking talking therapy because I am a trained talking therapist, right? I did that a few years ago, but I carried on working and did it as a volunteer, blah, blah, blah. blah. But, and that's what I'm saying, talking in itself is amazing. Yeah. But you can't always get to the deep root because when you're talking, we're using the 5% of our subconscious mind, sorry, 5% of our mind and 95 is subconscious, right? Yeah. So when we're just talking, 
you're not necessarily going to the gold because it's when you tap in to the subconscious mind, that's when you get all the stories. That's where all your memories are. And that's when sometimes if you're, say like if you're going for an exam or something and you're really panicking and you're you're really anxious and you you sit down and you go, oh my God, I, I don't even know what my name is. I can't even write my name down. That's because you, you've crashed your, you know, your your head's just full. In, in that 5% of your consciousness, it's just like you've blown it up, right? So what you do is you go, hang on, so you have to calm yourself. So, and this is in any situation, you know, you're in, you just stop and you just breathe. And I use coherent breathing, which is in for six and out for six through your nose. And just, and then once you've done that two or three times, you'll feel your body instantly change and you'll change the physiology of your body and it will calm it down and calm the nervous system down. And then you go, oh, I can remember my name now. Because now you're calm and you're tapping into your subconscious memory. I mean, as long as you've done the work, obviously. If you generally right. didn't realize, then good luck trying to find the answers. But if you generally know, you know, you know this stuff, yeah. you sit there, but you can't find it. And that's why sometimes when, you know, like you go, where did I put that phone or something? And then you'll be doing something else. And then you go, uh, oh, what's that person's name? Yeah. And then you'll just remember it when you're in the shower or something, won't you? And you're like, because you're... Your, your brain's just remembering that you needed to find that information for you and it's gone through the filing cabinet and now you're calm, it's flicking yeah. through. Oh, there you go, there's the answer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In those filing cabinets is also all your your pent-up feelings and emotions and negative energies. They're all in those filing cabinets as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's what we, yeah, come on. Yeah. 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 So, it, it is powerful but you really need to be tapping into the subconscious because that's where your gold is. Yeah. Um, so tell me this then, once you decided that you were, you was going to leave your job and you wanted to get well, you took yourselves away and you decided to build the business, what new stresses and things came up for you when you were starting out on something brand new? Yeah, I mean, well, obviously money to start with, um, because the income has completely gone. Um, we're very lucky in some respect that we haven't got any children, I think, so we didn't have to sort of worry about feeding them. It was just us um, and sorting ourselves out. And so we started renting out our property, we went and lived with my mum, so bless her, she helped us massively. Um, and it was just then finding that right strategy. I mean, we must have spent five, six months, 80, 90 grand on mentoring so far. Um, we've spent um, getting the right strategies and everything else. Once we found that right strategy and we knew that service accommodation was going to work and, you know, we had to replace income, obviously, and Trevor being an MD and being his right hand man, we were on very good salaries. So we were just like, we need to find... Mm -hmm an amount that we need to be able to afford to live on uh, to what was before growing the business and i think that was probably a little bit of stress wasn't it yes yeah. Yeah. yeah so sorry yes. i thought you were going to say about the um when we take ourselves away for that meeting on a weekly basis. Yeah, yeah yeah and yeah and that's the other thing yeah. uh, because obviously property was more of my passion rather than trevor's um i started probably being too dominant uh, and <laughs> bossy and then he almost <laughs> became my pa because it was like right go 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 i need to make money and i need to you're now following my passion um mm. the other way around i was always supporting travel so whatever his decisions were i was just yes 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 sort of thing um and in turn i guess i wanted him just to say yes 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 and he didn't um <sighs> Those but um, working on our personalities and realizing that I'm more creative and he's more of a uh, what are you a club analytical. Uh, analytical personality, we realized that even though in business obviously it's a tracks, I was getting frustrated with him and he was getting frustrated with me. So one of our mentorships that we went on was incredible and learning how to work as a couple in business. He used to say to us, right, what you need to do, you know, when we used to work on a Friday, go on a Friday to a public place. We used to go to a hotel, have a coffee and have like a, a meeting off site um, and discuss how well you've worked together, what goals you'd set, what you hadn't achieved, what your frustrations were in business. But more importantly, with yourselves, 
Um, mm. And that really opened our, our eye up to how we could work to each other's strength. Uh, whereas before, <clears throat> I was fighting to do stuff, and Trump's like, yeah, but that sounds really interesting. I want part of that, and vice versa. And, yeah, and we weren't just propelling the business in the mm. right way. So every Friday up until the pandemic, really, where we could get off-site, religiously, we went on a Friday and had those discussions because you're never going to sit there in a – hotel and have a full-blown argument oh it's oh you said this and you said that it's like yes trevor okay i'll write that down and tell you that down i would have liked to have seen some of those meeting minutes actually yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and i think that really it, really was, a game it. it was an absolute yeah. game changer. and that's what mm. we've always spoken about and and again, like Trevor was sort of saying or has said in the past about mindset, he wasn't really into that. It's just like always oh, mm-hmm. that. But now he understands about personalities and how we can work together. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we, yeah, we just have our own sort of jobs within our company um, separate. Um, so we're not mm-hmm. fighting with each other all the time. So it works really well. It's interesting, actually, because when you're in it, like you were and are, you don't always see the obvious do you because like if you think as you just said that to me i'm thinking oh okay yeah so when you were working a bit different because you're kind of on the same level now but yes. when you work together in the corporate world you had your, your own roles didn't you yes. and you know you knew where you stood you knew where you stood so why would it be any different when you were working together in business i suppose yeah but, but the the dynamics are different then aren't they because you are yeah, I think you know Julia said she was bossy, um, but equally, you know, uh, on the other when the shoes on the other foot, because I was used to being her boss, mm. I I found it quite difficult to adapt that Julia was now my equal. You know, so in, in yeah. the in the business world, yeah. you know, as yeah. a relationship, she's always yeah. made, taken. She's the, always the boss in a relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in, in business, it's you know, make gen- my tea, do my filing. You know, yes, sir, no, sir, sort of running around yeah. for him. Yeah. Like, no more. Um, <laughs> and, and what's interesting, because even as a like, just not working as working together, but just being a couple in a relationship, um, it, it's there's a whole topic around masculine and feminine energies, right? And it isn't anything to do with being a man or being a woman, but we all, men need masculine and feminine and so do I, so do we. Um, and it's about when, when you're in a relationship, it's like, like men, they always talk I don't know, about men need, needing cave time to go away and just be on their own. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of the time we're like, oh, so right for them, you know, that, that. But we should go and do it as well, right? And it's all about getting that balance right. And I can remember not quite so much in in my with with Andy, my current husband, but my my first husband. I was the breadwinner. I was up in London all the time. And when we had my son Josh, he was a stay at home dad for a while, and the dynamics were completely, you know. And he had a tough time because not many. Well, I don't think there's that many stay at home dads now, really, if I'm honest. But he used to get, he used to go to these swimming things and that, and he would see like the women giving out party invites, and he wouldn't get one. <laughs> right, and it was like, well, that's a bit harsh, but they can't be having men come around the house, right? I suppose if they, you know, and all that kind of stuff, or they, you know. And I was always like, when I come home, I'd be, he would. Here you go. There's Josh, you know, and I didn't mind because it's my time with him. But the whole the whole dynamics of it were completely screwed, completely screwed. Yeah. And now, when I look when I look back now, knowing with the information that I've got now, I'm like, no wonder it didn't really work because yeah. our energy is completely wrong, um, and we didn't understand how either or either was feeling. I mean, as as a mum. I used to have to come home and ask him how much food to give my, my son. I mean, how embarrassing is that? <laughs> how much food do I need to give him? And I felt awful. It's like, I'm, I'm his mum. I'm supposed to know how many bloody ounces he has in his bottle. Or, <laughs> how, you know, and, I, and Josh wasn't a good sleeper. And I can remember I used to say to Kevin, don't let him go to sleep. And he'd go, he'd ring me up and go, I'm so sorry. I went, you let him go to sleep, did you? In <laughs> I've got to go work tomorrow. I do not know safety. I was wired all the time. Yeah. But it's funny how I didn't I didn't really see myself as a stressed person. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. What 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 does stress, you know? And then as you get older, 
especially us women, when we get the old menopause, I remember, you know, going, I think I was calmish for a while, and then I was like, like, gone back into teenage mode, didn't it? Because you're like totally wired. So, we, and when you throw in like hormones, men and women, really, hormones, age, masculine and feminine energies, when we're getting it wrong, past history that we're bringing into a relationship, so I wonder anyone survives really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, dear. I guess it's yeah. crazy. No, I think we are lucky. I mean, we sort of we always call ourselves the A team because we can work together, but we play well together. You know, we've got our golf. We used to play tennis. We mm-hmm. like cat walks. We dog foster outside of uh, work as well. So we do have a lot of things in common, and and obviously, like you, we have the same goals. It's not like when you're working with somebody in the corporate world where. You know, you've got the the boss at the top, and he's got his goals. But actually, my goal is completely different to his because what he wants yes. is not what I want. Whereas when you're running your own business, and you know, hopefully mm. most couples are you know working together, they have those same goals. You have that drive as well uh, to mm. get done and the success. So, like yourself, mm. working on your own, you know, mm. if you wear the breadwinner, you've got to almost carry on doing that, but replace it with your new company. Your yeah, new company. I mean, being being on your own. It's tough, but equally, when you're working with other people, that can be tough as well, can't it? I mean, as a couple, you you literally have got the, the same goals, haven't you, in, in the sense that you're living in the same house, you want to go on the same holiday. So you're very entwined in that sense. But if you've got a business partner and you've got your own separate lives, then that's when sometimes you can get that disparity, can't you, when it starts, the scales might tip yeah but having said that having that person to bounce stuff off is amazing as well isn't it oh, yeah i think there's yeah, lots of yeah. pluses yeah. and minuses on yeah. both the arguments really to be yeah. you know we get often quite a lot of people say to us god i don't know how you can work with your uh, partner i'd end up killing mine and yet we get others that, that do it and they go it's wonderful we have a real understanding and i think that's the difference yeah. uh, you know every relationship is different there's no right way or wrong way or whatever <laughs> I think Jill and I have always had the similar dreams, aspirations, goals, and we tend to, you know, we always have that in the background. So, you know, mm. there might be little things that niggle us during the course of the day, and sometimes we might have a little bit of a, you know, um, a few words, but nothing major. But mm. at the end of the day, we we know that we can just discuss it. You know, we've been through this process, so we can happily talk about stuff out yeah. in the open like that yeah. rather than all up and then just going bah! i mean don't get me wrong those occasions still do happen it's inevitable but you yeah, know a lot, lot less than I, I'm, I'm amazed that we i yeah. hate to say we don't argue something else because every time we say it we end up having an argument <laughs> but we don't we might have the little bicker here yeah. and there, but nothing major yeah. and normally i end up having to apologize because i've sort of you know i'm the one that's all right it's also like the ups and downs if one of us is having you know a 20 percent day and the other one's having a 80 you know we bring each other back and help each other yeah. um yeah. that's quite nice just to you know listen to each other why am i feeling rubbish today and you know help me and vice versa so it's nice to bounce and bounce each other's ideas as well mm-hmm. you come up with i'm so creative sometimes i do go off on a tangent don't i and you're like well where's that come from like, i don't know <laughs> come up with another idea and it was like right start pulling me back and say no let's concentrate on this first or yeah, yeah. let's let it go so and it's yeah. having that confidence for someone else to listen to you and mm. that almost like yeah go for it or don't be stupid um yeah. so, well isn't yeah. it so reassurance and like you said earlier i think i think it was trevor i can't remember now but one of you said that it's all about um you are who you are aren't you from what you've been through and I, I totally agree with that and I think the sooner the sooner we can get in our heads that we can actually have what we want we can be who we want to be the better because for, for me and I'm sure you would agree that there's been times in our lives that have ha- things that have happened and we've held ourselves back for whatever reason like limiting beliefs and stuff mm-hmm. like that when we can work on ourselves and respect ourselves sooner rather than later, then when we go into our later years, we're, we're much more happier, we're much more accepting. 
there's none of there's none of that well i'm never going to have that i can't have that actually that's not true because if you want to make change in your life the only person that can make anything happen is you right yes and you have to want you need to want to change and then you do what you need to do to do that now i know money is not always available to everybody else but again money is money is an energy right so yeah we have to get our heads around that that if we if we want something it's about working in here getting our thoughts straight and telling ourselves a different story mm. it's telling ourselves that we can have what we want and when you hear yourself say things like i can't do this i, I can't i'm never going to get that why can't you why is it all right for someone else to have it and not for you do you know what i mean and it's like once you start getting your head around that and you can start using your imagination positively and stop with the self-talk then the world can open up yep. and if you start working on yourself and investing in yourself then you can start saying yes to things and then you end up doing things that you never knew you wanted to do now yeah. on, on that note on it, you were saying that you well and i know this anyway that you start you start um, creating training courses for people in a similar situation to you but if you thought about that like if you go back in your journey would you ever have seen yourself standing on stage talking and delivering such things well i think i mean you know i could answer that and go on forever about it to be honest but i know our time's limited so um <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. but you know um i think an example no, I don't think you ever. We we quite often look back and go, even five years, I never thought we'd be here. But mm. uh, just quickly tell you one story if that's okay. But in 1999, 2001, sorry, um, Julia wanted to go travelling. And I was always a bit of a, oh, you know, keep my career, keep the house, keep the car. But in the end, I took the plunge and we went travelling. We had a round-the-world ticket, but we spent most of our time in Australia and we ended up spending about six months out there. Mm. And we knew, we knew that we had nothing to come back to. Um, we had a little flat, but that was it. We had no jobs, no careers, nothing. But we started again. And actually, within no time, within four, three, four years, I was then an MD of a company. Yeah. You know, And it's not everything. I hadn't planned that. It's just the way it worked. And I think having that we can do it all over again if we have to attitude is then helps you to take that plunge same as this business you know we know if it doesn't work for whatever reason then that's not the end of the world we can do something else so you know you we have that yeah we? adaptability yeah. And, yeah. and the belief i think the self -belief. Yeah. yeah self belief yeah believe yeah, in it absolutely and that is the thing if you've got that belief then you can start visualizing then can't you and you know you were talking earlier about setting your goals and you can start seeing yourself doing things, saying yes to things, meeting people that you didn't know we were going to meet. And we know that from, I mean, we're all off to Thailand, aren't we, in, in yeah. the future. That's business retreat, but that's also something that we really like and we really enjoy. And yeah. I went last year, so I know you're going to have an amazing time. But it's it's about um, the doorbell going. <laughs> Being around like-minded people, isn't it? And enjoying what we're doing and, and that kind of thing. So saying yes to things is literally does open doors. Yeah. It changes your life, doesn't it? And if I it agree. means yeah, go on. I was just saying surrounding yourself with like-minded yes. people, that, that's yeah. the key. Because that people the key. other people, like-minded people, understand, you know, you and what you're going through and, and can resonate with that. And it really helps to mm propel you and give you the confidence yeah, as well absolutely yeah. yeah yeah so do you want to just just to round up now do you want to just give everybody well give you the opportunity just to share what you're up to next in in your training programs okay yeah uh so we are we're actually running a um a two-day course on the 16th and 17th of february over in peterborough um and we're basically introducing people into the realm and world of service service accommodation so it, we can show them what's possible, what's achievable. You know, we've managed to do flips out of that from, um, you know, what we generated through service accommodation. Uh, and we want to give people that opportunity to be able to have either, a, you know, an added income as a side mm. hustle or, you know, a way out of the rat race. Like mm. we were, we were in that pressure, you know, rat race as, as for want of a better word. And to be honest, it was the best thing we ever did was getting out. And so, you know, 
that going back to what you were saying about the limited beliefs, you know, mm. there is a way and, and we would like to be able to show people there is a way rather than them suffering from whatever stresses it is they're under, there is another way of actually dealing with life and enjoying it. Um, and we found it through service accommodation because of the freedom, not just financial, but the actual time freedom it gave yeah. us as well. And I think that for us is important that we can now hopefully show other people how that they can benefit from um, the world yeah. that we live in. Mm, I love that. Yeah, and I, I know you're just going to go from strength to strength because you're that type of people and, you know, you're likeable, you, you work together as a team, and why can't you have it all? That's why good. can't you have money in abundance, work-life balance, you know, living the living your dreams? Why can't you? Well, exactly. you can. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Exactly. It's just that having that leap of faith, really, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Confident yeah. in yourself. So once you sort your head out with you, then <laughs> come on out. <laughs> And this is it. And and anyone watching this, and you you are, you feel that you're in that in that you're caught up and you're stuck and you don't know what you want to be doing and where you want to go. Reach out, reach out and speak to me. Right. I have a group program now that I run, um, and we we really focus on the three fundamental problems that we've been talking about here. It's you know basically getting you from from stress, giving you some confidence and clarity and serenity in your life right but we look at the three main problems which are you're not looking after yourself right so you're not taking time out you're not respecting yourself so you're not meditating you're not really looking after yourself so we the, that module is going from lack of lack of respect to self-respect right then it goes i'm too busy i haven't got time i haven't got time to do a training program right because i'm doing this i'm doing that i'm too busy i haven't got time to eat properly and um, blah 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 well, guess what? If you're not taking time out for yourself and looking at and respecting yourself, then you're going to have the physical, psychological and physical issues that are going to come with it. So it's yeah. like that whole complete problem of understanding the mindset, understanding what's your story, what stories are you telling yourself, what language are you using? And we're going to do that with tapping into your subconscious mind. So there's going to be hypnosis, there's going to be audios. And the thing that I love about it as well is I'm going to do you're going to have a portal that you'll go through the program in your own in your own time but i'm going to have live coaching sessions where you can bring your questions to me and share in the group because we know from our business training and also from my therapy training that's how it works when you're in a group community when you are as you said trevor with like-minded people you can actually build up a report you might even be able to sell some business to each other who knows depending on who's in that group yeah. but don't be stuck and I obviously work with people on a one-to-one -one basis as well, but the group programs where I want to go, like you, because then I can service more people. Yeah. But obviously I love doing my one-to-ones and going deep diving and getting to people's root and getting rid of it, not just trimming it down, get the root, yank it out, sprinkle some moon dust and stardust so that you can grow new, strong beliefs. Yeah. yeah. So on that note, where can people find you? Well, we've got our website, which is tjpropertymastery.co.uk. Um, email is events at tjpad.co.uk. So love to hear from everybody. Start following us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. We're there all on the socials. So, yeah. All on the socials. Mm -hmm. and this video um, obviously is streamed out live, but also it will be going on my YouTube channel. So that's Middleside Therapy and Coaching on YouTube, where you'll find this video and many, many other interviews and also client testimonials and client interviews that I've done as well. So don't be a stranger. Contact either any of, oh, I can't say either of us, all of us if you need to. Um, and thank you so much for coming on. I've really enjoyed speaking with you and really looking forward to spending time with you in Thailand. And we look forward to meeting you all again soon on my next Become Unstoppable interview where I'll have another amazing guest or two. Who knows? Thank <laughs> you for watching. <laughs> See you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye.